Hi. Welcome back. This is day number 112, and I pray that the Lord will bless you real good through these readings, Joshua 2 and 3, our second reading in Psalm 68, and our first reading in Acts 20. Let's open to Joshua chapter 2. Yesterday, we started the book of Joshua, named after the man God chose as Moses' successor. In this book, we will see the victory of the chosen people in conquering the promised land, chapters 1 through 12, and then the occupation of the promised land, chapters 13 through 24. Three times in Deuteronomy 31, we heard the challenge, Be Determined and confident, and that command was repeated three more times to Joshua in chapter 1. Joshua 2 Then Joshua sent two spies from the camp at Acacia with orders to go and secretly explore the land of Canaan, especially the city of Jericho. When they came to the city, they went to spend the night in the house of a prostitute named Rahab. The king of Jericho heard that some Israelites had come that night to spy out the country, so he sent word to Rahab, The men in your house have come to spy out the whole country. Bring them out. She answered, Some men did come to my house, but I don't know where they were from. They left at sundown before the city gate was closed. I didn't find out where they were going, but if you start after them quickly, you can catch them. Now Rahab had taken the two spies up on the roof and hidden them under some stalks of flax that she had put there. The king's men left the city, and then the gate was shut. They went looking for the Israelite spies as far as the place where the road crosses the Jordan. Before the spies settled down for the night, Rahab went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land. Everyone in the country is terrified of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the Red Sea in front of you when you were leaving Egypt. We have also heard how you killed Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan. We were afraid as soon as we heard about it. We have all lost our courage because of you. The Lord your God is God in heaven above and here on earth. Now swear by him that you will treat my family as kindly as I have treated you and give me some sign that I can trust you. Promise me that you will save my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all their families. Don't let us be killed. The men said to her, May God take our lives if we don't do as we say. If you don't tell anyone what we have been doing, we promise you that when the Lord gives us this land, we will treat you well. Rahab lived in a house built into the city wall, so she let the men down from the window by a rope. She said, Go into the hill country, or the king's men will find you. Hide there for three days until they come back. After that, you can go on your way. The men said to her, We will keep the promise that you have made us give. This is what you must do. When we invade your land, tie this red cord to the window you let us down from. Get your father and mother, your brothers, and all your father's family together in your house. If anyone goes out of the house, his death will be his own fault, and we will not be responsible. But if anyone in the house with you is harmed, then we will be responsible. However, if you tell anyone what we have been doing, then we will not have to keep our promise which you have made us give you. She agreed and sent them away. When they had gone, she tied the red cord to the window. The spies went into the hills and hid. 
The king's men looked for them all over the countryside for three days, but they did not find them, so they returned to Jericho. Then the two spies came down from the hills, crossed the river, and went back to Joshua. They told him everything that had happened, and then said, We are sure that the Lord has given us the whole country. All the people there are terrified of us. Joshua 3 The next morning Joshua and all the people of Israel got up early, left the camp at Acacia, and went to the Jordan, where they camped while waiting to cross it. Three days later the leaders went through the camp and told the people, When you see the priests carrying the covenant box of the Lord your God, break camp and follow them. You have never been here before, so they will show you the way to go. But do not get near the covenant box. Stay about half a mile behind it. Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, because tomorrow the Lord will perform miracles for you. Then he told the priests to take the covenant box and go with it ahead of the people. They did as he said. The Lord said to Joshua, What I do today will make all the people of Israel begin to honor you as a great man, and they will realize that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests carrying the covenant box that when they reach the river, they must wade in and stand near the bank. Then Joshua said to the people, Come here and listen to what the Lord your God has to say. As you advance, he will surely drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. You will know that the living God is among you when the covenant box of the Lord of all the earth crosses the Jordan ahead of you. Now choose twelve men, one from each of the tribes of Israel. When the priests who carry the covenant box of the Lord of all the earth put their feet in the water, the Jordan will stop flowing, and the water coming downstream will pile up in one place. It was harvest time, and the river was in flood. When the people left the camp to cross the Jordan, the priests went ahead of them, carrying the covenant box. As soon as the priests stepped into the river, the water stopped flowing and piled up, far upstream at Adam, the city beside Zarathon. The flow downstream to the Dead Sea was completely cut off, and the people were able to cross over near Jericho. While the people walked across on dry ground, the priests carrying the Lord's covenant box stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until all the people had crossed over. We turn for the second time to Psalm 68. This psalm starts with the words Moses spoke whenever the covenant box was taken up to be moved to another place. Rise up, O God, and scatter your enemies. And David adds, Let those who hate God run for their lives. The Hebrew title is A Psalm and a Song by David for the Music Leader. Psalm 68, from the Contemporary English Version, CEV, starting at verse 19. We praise you, Lord God. You treat us with kindness day after day, and you rescue us. You always protect us and save us from death. Our Lord and our God, your terrible enemies are ready for war, but you will crush their skulls. You promise to bring them from Bashan and from the deepest sea. Then we could stomp on their blood and our dogs could chew on their bones. We have seen crowds marching to your place of worship 
our God and King. The singers come first, and then the musicians surrounded by young women playing tambourines. They come shouting, People of Israel, praise the Lord God. The small tribe of Benjamin leads the way, followed by the leaders from Judah. Then come the leaders from Zebulun and Naphtali. Our God, show your strength. Show us once again. Then kings will bring gifts to your temple in Jerusalem. Punish that animal that lives in the swamp. Punish that nation whose leaders and people are like wild bulls. Make them come crawling with gifts of silver. Scatter those nations that enjoy making war. Force the Egyptians to bring gifts of bronze. Make the Ethiopians hurry to offer presents. Now sing praises to God. Every kingdom on earth sing to the Lord. Praise the one who rides across the ancient skies. Listen as he speaks with a mighty voice. Tell about God's power. He is honored in Israel, and he rules the skies. The God of Israel is fearsome in his temple, and he makes us strong. Let's praise our God. Now let's turn for the first time to Acts 20. Yesterday we heard how Demetrius, the silversmith, shrine-making businessman, incited a riot against Paul. Acts 20 After the uproar died down, Paul called together the believers and with words of encouragement said goodbye to them. Then he left and went on to Macedonia. He went through those regions and encouraged the people with many messages. Then he came to Achaia, where he stayed three months. He was getting ready to go to Syria when he discovered that there were Jews plotting against him, so he decided to go back through Macedonia. So Pater, son of Pyrrhus, from Berea, went with him. So did Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derbe, Tychicus and Trophimus from the province of Asia, and Timothy. They went ahead and waited for us in Troas. We sailed from Philippi after the festival of unleavened bread, and five days later we joined them in Troas, where we spent a week. On Saturday evening we gathered together for the fellowship meal. Paul spoke to the people and kept on speaking until midnight, since he was going to leave the next day. Many lamps were burning in the upstairs room where we were meeting. A young man named Eutychus was sitting in the window, and as Paul kept on talking, Eutychus got sleepier and sleepier until he finally went sound asleep and fell from the third story to the ground. When they picked him up, he was dead. But Paul went down and threw himself on him and hugged him. Don't worry, he said. He is still alive. Then Paul went back upstairs, broke bread, and ate. After talking with them for a long time, even until sunrise, Paul left. They took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. We went on ahead to the ship and sailed off to Assos, where we were going to take Paul aboard. He had told us to do this because he was going there by land. When he met us in Assos, we took him aboard and went on to Mytilene. We sailed from there and arrived off Chios the next day. A day later we came to Samos, 
and the following day we reached Miletus. Paul had decided to sail on by Ephesus so as not to lose any time in the province of Asia. He was in a hurry to arrive in Jerusalem by the day of Pentecost, if at all possible. From Miletus, Paul sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I spent the whole time I was with you from the first day I arrived in the province of Asia. With all humility and many tears, I did my work as the Lord's servant during the hard times that came to me because of the plots of some Jews. You know that I did not hold back anything that would be of help to you as I preached and taught in public and in your homes. To Jews and Gentiles alike I gave solemn warning that they should turn from their sins to God and believe in our Lord Jesus. And now, in obedience to the Holy Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit has warned me that prison and troubles wait for me. But I reckon my own life to be worth nothing to me. I only want to complete my mission and finish the work that the Lord Jesus gave me to do, which is to declare the good news about the grace of God. I have gone about among all of you, preaching the kingdom of God, and now I know that none of you will ever see me again. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father and our Savior, Christ Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you would send the Holy Spirit to be with us and lead us just as you led Paul. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be bold in proclaiming your word. Paul did not hold back from proclaiming in public and privately in homes everything that would be helpful to his audience. Lord, help us not to hold back in any opportunity that you give to us. He told people plainly that they must turn from their sins to God and believe in the Lord Jesus. And that's our message also. And Lord, he did not reckon his life to be worth anything. The only thing he wanted was to complete the mission that you gave him. Oh Lord, it's true. Our lives will soon be gone, and what we leave behind will disappear. Lord, help us to finish well the work that the Lord Jesus gives to us. Help us to declare the good news about the grace of God. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that our lives would bring glory to you, even today.